Silly Putty. Dental Floss. Jack Jack from The Incredibles. Your Mother's Mother. Kids Bop 5. Vodka Diet Coke. Rock, Paper, Scissors, Gun. Welcome back to Hive Mind Unlimited. Random Things Bracketed is what it sounds like. Our friends have selected 64 random things to compete against each other bracket style. Last time the prestigious Trapezoid won, today it's time to crown a new champion. Before we get into it, Patreon, Cameo, merch, everything's linked in description. Let's do this bracket. First matchup we've got Mr. Crocker from Fairly Odd Parents versus the Pythagorean Theorem. I don't even know what the second one is, so I'm gonna go Mr. Crocker. Well, the second one is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Those are letters. How are you adding those up? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Okay. You what? never heard of Pythagoras? <laughs> Pythagoras. It's his theorem. Is this like a Twitter thing or something? I'm not on that. Yeah, it's a Twitter thing. Yeah. I don't even really remember what Mr. Crocker's role in the show was. Was he like a, a bad guy? I think he was a teacher. He worked at the school for yeah. sure. And oh. then he was suspicious that Timmy Turner had fairy godparents and he would exclaim, fairy godparents! And he would turn into all different forms of himself. His, <laughs> oh, ear, yeah. his ears are on his neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But that, that's just how he always is. His yeah. ears are on his neck for some reason. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's an absolute freakazoid. I like that. Um, and yeah, I can't, I don't even want to try and say the second thing. I'm going with the, the ear neck guy. Yeah, me too. Next we've got Union Busting versus Dance Dance Revolution. Ah, oh, now this one's tough. It's important in the random things bracket to remember that we're not like in support of what we vote for, you know what I mean? It's kind of them as concepts. And just the word Union Busting. Kind of funny. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> funny. I also think it's kind of funny that you know a lot about Union Busting but yeah. have no idea what the Pythagorean Theorem is. Again, with the Twitter stuff, man. Let's just keep it in the real world for me, for my sake, like, so I can kind of participate in this game. I want to be able to talk and have fun, too. And so let's let's stray away from, like, hipster Twitter or whatever the hell it comes from, all right? You're just into history and stuff, you know? You like FDR and JFK. I'm more of a DDR guy. Dance Dance Revolution, amazing game. I tore my MCL playing it once at a Red Roof Inn, so I'm going to have to go with Union Busting. Yeah, I'm going to go with Dance Dance Revolution which means we're gonna have to toss this one to DJ Grant. I'm taking Dance Dance Revolution, baby. God, That's fine. It's so fun. Yeah, there's good songs on there too. They'll like play some city pop, you know, right. and get some bangers on there. I remember Angel is a centiphold. Yes. Angel is a centiphold. That song kind of sucks, but like there's songs that suck but are really good when it's in a game. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Uh Like if that song came on the radio, I'd be like, ugh. Ugh. But if I hear it in Dance Dance Revolution, I'm like, let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Packing peanuts versus consensual workplace relationships. Ooh, I'm a sucker for a consensual workplace relationship, but packing peanuts, once they made those suckers edible, you can eat them? Yeah, they're edible now. They make them out of like uh, all natural materials. Wow. They have vegan ones too, if that's your thing. Well, those are the closest thing to peanuts that I can eat then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I got to go with those because it's kind of like mocking up something that I'm allergic to mm-hmm. and making it a nice little chewable foam snack. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like the cheese puff. Next, we got a good potluck versus the thinker. Can you really beat a good potluck? I mean, there's nothing like it. (laughs) When all your friends make their specialty and they come over, I mean, you get a meal of like tacos, swordfish, pizza, beef stew. I mean, it's awesome. Who brings swordfish to a potluck? Are you starting? Oh, you're starting to point at yourself. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It's you. You bring swordfish to a potluck. Is that it? I mean, no, that's awesome. It's just expensive. It seems like it's kind of like a it's a prize fish. You know? I always impress my friends. I go all out for my pals. The Thinker, massively overrated. Super overrated. Similar In the same category as like Mona Lisa. Yeah, but I mean, his lats are fantastic. I will say that. I've seen better on our producer. Really? Grant's <laughs> lats are dumb. I don't think he can compete with The Thinker. The Thinker's stupid. Quit thinking and do. <laughs> Next, we've got Bucky Dent versus Setting Boundaries. Wow, the picture for Setting Boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> Bucky Dent, famous New York Yankees baseball player mm-hmm. who hit a walk-off home run in the World Series, I believe. Correct. And I think that's really all he's ever done. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like a radio commentator for the Yankees now. He seems like kind of the guy, you know, the home team brings into the fold. Yeah. Yeah, Bucky, you can be a swing coach, do whatever, just hang around the organization. You're good vibes. I'm actually confident that he does have a baseball school. Bucky Dent's baseball school. Exactly. Because I'm pretty sure I had a hat that said that when I was a kid. That's fire. I wish you still had it. It might be somewhere in my parents' house. I'll go rummaging through there soon once they forgive me. (laughs) 
Bucky Dent, just an awesome name. Yes. Setting boundaries, I've never much cared for that or done that. I was going to say, I, I'm, I kind of like setting boundaries. Me, personally, I am not a big fan of it. Uh, I just feel like it's like, why even think about shit like that? You know what I mean? <laughs> Bucky Dent, funny name, and Yankees player. <laughs> Setting boundaries, however, not my favorite. <laughs> yeah, you kind of convinced me there with that slight rub down. I'm going to go with Bucky Dent, too. I'm right. going to fuck the boundaries. <laughs> Bucky Dent hit it out of the boundaries. Bucky Dent absolutely violating this baseball stadium's <laughs> boundaries. Next, we got climbing the corporate ladder versus church pews. Two things I'm pretty unfamiliar with. Right. The pews are just the bench, right? It's just a bench. Uh, I wouldn't call it just a bench. It's kind of a holy bench filled with <laughs> magic, but <laughs> it's filled with magic. Yeah. I'm going with church pews here. Climbing the corporate ladder is just a who cares? Yeah. I'd rather climb a library ladder, the ones that can wheel around. Those are sick. I know. I want those in my house those at some are point. Very sick. Yeah. I want one, but like for a liquor cabinet that's like 40 feet tall. Right. Yeah. Oh, you need mezcal? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. And I hate to do this. I know you tore your MCL playing Dance Dance Revolution, but I would like some top shelf liquor if you could climb up there. <laughs> Whoever named church pews definitely got that right. That's for sure what those things are. <clears throat> Sorry. This is for Twitter. Yeah, again, with the Twitter stuff. Um, that Pythagorean theorem is serving. Am I doing this right? Yeah, it's giving Pythagoras. Yeah, say that. Slay, Pythagoreans. <laughs> she A squared on my B squared till I C squared. Next, we've got going back to the old stomping grounds, in parentheses, high school <laughs> and Renaissance festivals. This is like going back to your physical high school, or can we do going back to your hometown? I think people say it just when they're in their hometown, even if it's like just somewhere they hung out. Like it yeah. could be the Walmart parking lot. You True. can be like, I'm back in my old stomping grounds. Yeah. You bring my, like a college buddy home and you're showing him around. You go to Steak and Shake and you're like, back at the old stomping grounds. I used to <laughs> smoke midweed out here. <laughs> I was going to say, this is where I smoked my first goint. <laughs> <laughs> you say goint? Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Cigarette paper, roll up some weed. It's where I smoked my first goint. And then your buddy's like, it doesn't mean that much to him. And he's like, oh, I remember where I smoked. Smoked my first going. It's not even spelled with a G. Like, it's not, like, up for interpretation. It's a J. It's joint. Well, I mean, it's gif jif kind of deal. It's not. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. Okay, I have a question then. When you get married, yeah. you get a what bank account? Goint. <laughs> a goint bank account. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to die on this hill today? This is, like, a dumb one, man. I'm like, not dying. I'm smoking goints with my guys. You've never heard that? Goints? They say it in rap songs. No, they don't. Yeah, they Wiz Khalifa <laughs> doesn't smoke blunts. He smokes goints. What? Yeah. Yeah. When Spike Lee makes a movie, what is it called? A Spike Lee going. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to leave that. Well, we're going to put a pin in that. We'll sure. circle back to that at some point, I'm sure. Put again in that. Again? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. That's sure. not even, it's a P. That's like G, J, you know, whatever. What? You know? <laughs> PG-13, whatever. Regardless. Old stomping grounds, saying that, mm -hmm. very nice, yeah. kind of rootsy. Rootsy phrase. And then Renfests. Kind of like a really old stomping grounds. I've never been to a Renaissance festival, though, so. Neither I can, have I. If I'm being honest, yeah. if it's like 40 bucks to get in, I'm good. The money ain't a thing to me. It's more about, like, the people who want to take me to a Renfest. There's just a little too much, like, high school music like Hamilton fan going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going back for stomping grounds. Yeah, I'm going to go with stomping grounds. You hit up your old weed man. You know what I mean? That's yeah. such a fun vibe. Hey man, you in town still? And he's like, yeah man, I got eighths right now for five bucks. And you're like, fuck yes, <laughs> let's go. Okay, next we've got kiss or slap versus cool landlords. Kiss or slap the game? I've never heard of kiss or slap. Is it like a prank channel type of thing? It's a big TikTok trend where like a hot guy walks up to a hot girl and is like kiss or slap and she either kisses him or slaps him. Oh, that is so lame. They chose against setting boundaries as well. I mean, yeah. that is like, seems very inappropriate and at the very least, just douchey. You ever had a cool landlord too? <sighs> I've had cool landlords, but they're still landlords. It's really nice when you got a chill landlord. I'm going with cool landlords. I am as well. Next, we've got W. Riz versus finding a sand dollar. Oh, sand dollars are gas. <laughs> the picture of W. Riz is Mr. Beast. <laughs> he said. <laughs> Riz is really taking the globe by storm. I think we have to address it, though. Yeah, I think so, too. When are we going to stop? And when are we going to set the boundaries for it? You know what I mean? Like, it's becoming too all-encompassing, and this is how words die out so fast, is like, I'll meet someone now, and that's all they'll say. They'll be like, Riz, 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 right. Riz, 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 Riz. And I'm like, okay, it's not a joke anymore. Yeah, it's like possessed your brain like a parasite, and now you've 
come down like 12 rings on the IQ scale. Yeah, like Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I like that it has no definition anymore. I yeah. do like that part. It's just that it is so overused that I know that two months from now, we're going to look back and be like, we really said Riz? Like, right. you know what I mean? And I don't want it to die that way because I do think it's kind yeah. of like a acrobatic term. I do appreciate phrases like that. Yeah, I like the vernacular. I mean, I like, and it's just a fun word to say, Riz, you know? Lando Calrissian. Rizzard State by King Cruel. Rizzy and the Trinkle Twins. If you strike out at the bar, it's a disaster. But finding a sand dollar is pretty magical. That's a timeless activity. You get to show it to your cousins and be like, I found a sand dollar. And yeah. they're like, shut up. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. I got stung by a jellyfish 20 minutes ago. Somebody's got to piss on my leg. Yeah. <laughs> with all that being said, I'm going to go with W Riz. I'm going with sand dollar. Grant? I'm going to take the sand dollar. Mm. Yeah. See, I want a picture of me fanning out like 40 of them <laughs> with my pants sagging. My truies. All right, next we've got the woke agenda versus Smokey the Bear. What the fuck's the difference? <laughs> One's just a mascot for the other. This isn't even a picture of the woke agenda. This is a picture of the wook agenda. <laughs> Smokey the Bear has lost all meaning. I feel like there really isn't a soul inside of that character. <laughs> yeah. Also, like, our generation doesn't go outside. Right. So his job is kind of moot now. It's like, don't light the forest on fire. And they're like, Shut the fuck up! You know, we're skipping the Smokey the Bear ads on YouTube. We're not going out in the woods. If we are considering the woke agenda, then when are we going to get Smokey the Twink? <laughs> Is there any referees watching? I, I think that was a fair play. I think yeah. I'm allowed to use it in that context. Yeah, the word bear, thing. Twink, yeah. bear and Twink. Okay, yeah. cool. Again, would like to reiterate my steadfast support of the LGBTQ plus community. And uh, thank you for sponsoring this video. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the woke agenda as a term. I like it way more. I don't know. There's something about like a personified forest critter trying to tell us to stop burning down his home. You know what I mean? He's mm -hmm. a park ranger. There's something about the character I am kind of fond of. Seems like a grumpy old man. You should kind of just suck it up. Tuck back in that cabin and hope to God it doesn't burn down. That's what I say. You know, you're right. I'm going with the woke agenda. <laughs> woke agenda it is. And what they'll want you to believe is that we're burning down our national parks. Now consider for a second that we shouldn't have national parks to begin with. What business does the government have in funding camping spots for stoners and hippies alike? <laughs> Tying a bunch of balloons to Hasbullah and watching him float away Aww. versus are you mad at me? Are you mad at me? If I looked like a spider and wouldn't stop throwing up, would you still love me? If all I could wear for the rest of my life was a Pittsburgh Steelers uniform with pads and all, helmet on too, <laughs> would you still love me? Yeah, sure, whatever. Just let me play my game. I mean, one of these is such an image. But then we lose Hasbullah. He'd be fine. You think so? Yeah. Where would he float to? I don't know. The sun. All right, has Bula, you gone float on <laughs> all right. right. Yeah, I'm going with that one. It's I'm going with are you mad at me? You like that shit? It's just such a potent phrase. It implies so much. It's a cultural landmark. I've heard it so many times. I've said it so many times. You know? <laughs> Grant, what do you think? The Hasbulla one's funnier, so I'm gonna take that one. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. Now we got that one guy versus Corn Maze. Easiest matchup yet. Corn Maze. Kind of a redundant phrase. Corn Maze? Oh my God. Uh, I do love corn mazes. I used to work at one. Well, it was at the Christmas tree farm that I worked at. They also had a corn maze and a butterfly house. Am I supposed to be impressed or something? You said the, you said the butterfly house, like, oh, he's going to like this. I mean, what's wrong with you? Have you no wonder? Have you no joy? <laughs> I mean, it's fine. <laughs> it's just like a bug barn, though. Bug barn? <laughs> That's what it's I... It's so much more than that. The butterfly house. They're little bugs. They're beautiful. I mean... My ass, they're beautiful. They're it's resplendent a, wings. Do you, a, not, do you not enjoy their resplendent wings? It's like a Cinderella worm. They're vivacious creatures. Symbolic of change and evolution. A worm turns into a tapestry. I mean, what, what more <laughs> could you want from nature and from God up above? Sex. Jesus, man. That's all it's about for you? No, but you asked. Yeah, I asked and you answered and I was not so happy with that answer. Some animals are hot. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at what? that. What? That's yeah. not where we we're going. That's all I'm going to say. That one guy's cool, though. I'm going corn maze easily, though. I'm going to go with corn maze, yeah. Now we got ghouls and goblins versus the hustle. Another really easy one, honestly. Is the hustle like a movie or TV show? Is there the idea of the hustle? It's the idea of the hustle. Okay. The idea of the hustle? Yes. Awesome. Uh, love that. But ghouls and goblins, I mean... <laughs> Undefeated, in my mind. Phonetically. Ghouls and goblins. Ghouls and goblins. It does generate quite a pleasing image in my brain as well. Green, goop-covered characters uh -huh. kind of screaming at you with crazy <laughs> faces and stuff. <gasps> I like that. The hustle, though, it's very motivating. It's good and all, but it kind of seems like this manufactured phrase for the capitalist system 
society. The thing about the hustle though, is while I may not love it, I have to respect it. For sure. That term alone turns scammers into businessmen. Ghouls and goblins turn children into soup though. <laughs> right, I forgot about so, that, the soup curse of 1955. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going ghouls and goblins here. Yeah, I gotta go with ghouls and goblins too. One-sided open relationships versus shadow puppets. One's a terrible trap and one is a beautiful masterpiece of like ancient artistry. Yeah, it's almost like cave drawing, but for like children with a flashlight. Our government's kind of run by shadow puppets. Hey, I'll get into it later. I want shadow puppets to win. Yeah, me too. Next, we've got Oedipus complex versus trauma dumping. <laughs> this one's tough. <laughs> one leads to another, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh golly. For those not familiar with Greek, Oedipus complex is when a man feels sexual attraction towards his own mother. Really popularized in the theory of the, what's his name? Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud, what yeah. a stupid name. Stupid, stupid guy too. Freudian slips. Yep. Those are kind of when you accidentally mistake one word for another uh -huh. and imply usually something sexual in general, but a lot of the time leading towards your mother. Nice rack, mom. I mean, rack of ribs. I mean, boobies. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then trauma dumping we're all familiar with. It's kind of like the entire internet right now. As an empath, I, I prefer to be dumped on with trauma. And as an avid gossiper, I like trauma dumping too. Yeah, I'm a big fan of trauma dumping and I learned way too much of Sigmund Freud's bullshit in school, so get him out of here. Yep, trauma dumping. All right, last one on this side, we've got Coney 2012 versus a quick glance. A quick glance can imply so many things. It's a very broad term. A quick romantic glance across the supermarket, maybe, with a stranger. Oh, see, I had a totally different thing in mind. It's like, we're talking and it's a tense conversation, and like, I look over at your kitchen knives real quick. <laughs> My eyes just kind of stray over there. We're like, listen, man, we're gonna be able to work this out, but if oh. you make, and you're like, wait, what the fuck? Did you just look at my kitchen knives? And it kind of changes the whole course of the conversation. So it's kind of like a POV. You're watching somebody have intrusive thoughts. Exactly. Yes. Glance half full. That's how I try and look at life. <laughs> Smoking goints and just kind of feeling like everything's half glance full. <sighs> <laughs> I need a glance of wine. <laughs> My glance runneth over. <laughs> uh, but Coney 2012 is unbeatable to me. All that shit and empathy drummed up for a terrible situation in Africa, only to be done by a madman who would be found later in the streets, naked, masturbating, and thrown in the can. Totally. That story is remarkable. It is. We had full-on presentations at school. We had to wear Coney 2012 shirts. Yep. Like, it was really one of those conspiracies that just took Hoodwinked. over. I mean, everybody was absolutely befumbled by that, yeah. which is a word. I'm going with it. Yeah, Coney 2012. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And one time at Joseph Coney on Jefferson and Connor, I ordered a bunch of food and it came out to be 2012. That is awesome. Swear to God, it was a big, 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 big day. That's serendipity at work. I wasn't, I was off. I wasn't working at the Coney. First one on the second side, we've got vacuuming crumbs versus fun socks. Ooh, really tough early matchup here. Ah, I've soured on fun socks. I've gotten too many of them for Christmas. I actually had to send a cease and desist to my dear mother. Ah, damn. Yeah, too many colorful socks didn't match with much of my wardrobe. Eventually, I just wanted something reliable. You know, Carhartt, Dickies, New Balance. Yeah, I really appreciated fun socks when I worked in the service industry. Okay. Kind of to flare up the uniform that the big dog upstairs makes you wear. Yeah, the all black, mm -hmm. the Skechers. Yeah, but I don't know, vacuuming crumbs is like a, a primal satisfaction, but I'm still kind of in my fun sock era. I don't like vacuuming crumbs, but I definitely want to swear off fun socks, so. We're at ends here then. Grant? I'm gonna take fun socks. Let's yeah, go. I knew you would. You're Let's really go. a fun sock guy, kind of. Grant loves accessories. Next we've got the drunken clam versus identity. Identifying the problem. The drunken clam. Yeah, easily. I mean, one of the easiest ones you yeah. could ever get. We don't even have to talk about that. <laughs> what I would do for a pint there. I'd kill a man or a woman. Anybody, really. <laughs> what I would do to share a pint with Quagmire and Peter and Joe and Brian and Zaboomba Fang and the Trenton. Fuck? Trent. <laughs> um, my cartoon boys, you know what I mean? I feel like I would fit in. You conveniently left out Cleveland. He's got his own show. I th is he still on it? I don't know. Just wanted to point, put that out there and make of that what you will. Uh, and then, <laughs> yeah, he has his own show. And then you got Trenton in there. And Trenton. I, don't, I don't know who Trenton is. Trenton, he's like the zany, uh, he's kind of like, a, you don't know whether he's a human because he has that tail. What? 
Um, He's like the zany guy. He shows up in season two, reoccurring character. Is this like a Mandela effect thing? Trenton. Or? It doesn't matter. I would love, Drunken Clan moves on. We'll talk yeah. about it more later, All I right. guess. But wow. Next we've got Zamboni versus three <laughs> sneezes in a row. Zamboni. I mean, God damn, that thing is awesome. It's a big polishing car. It's it's <laughs> weird. Three sneezes in a row. That's three eighths of an orgasm. I sneeze like 15 times in a row. So I, I literally just blow my load. <laughs> yeah. After I'm done sneezing, it is like exhausting. That's true. It's like taking a Viagra or something. Mm-hmm. I've thought about firing you during those fits. Before. Yeah, I'm sure you have. Yeah. It's, it's ruined relationships of mine in the past. Yeah. But it's not even just like a sneeze like that. No, it's like it's, a sneeze and then eventually it's like a, oh my God, like in between <laughs> each one. It's like an exasperation that I can't even, I can only liken to like running a marathon. Yeah. You know? I mean, you try sneezing that many times in a row. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to go with Zamboni though. For sure. Yeah, I just had to speak my piece on the three sneezes. But I mean, Zamboni, one of the best words. Feels like it should be an Italian pasta, but instead (laughs) it's like a weird little street cleaner for a hockey rink. Yeah. (laughs) You remember the, I think it was a guy in Detroit for the Red Wings, the Zamboni driver, like a legend, but he was pissing in the arena and then they fired him. Yeah. It's a bummer. You just be able to piss anywhere. They've got troughs in the bathroom is that much different right than, yeah you know that's the mean? big deal the world is my urinal that's the way i look at it well actually most of the time my pants are my urinal <laughs> oh yeah all right next we got the hump day camel versus local mall santa local mall santa's too political yeah you know, like can he be skinny can he be black like i just you know i don't want to talk about that who cares it's a fictional character yeah. like based on an old saint and then popularized and stylized by coca-cola yeah hump day camel hump day hump day I mean, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, you get to say that. Hump day. Hump day. Yeah, and I was reading, I got sucked into a Reddit rabbit hole about mall Santas and the terrible things that have happened with them. Right. Bad actors out there trying to be Santa. Pedophiles, drunks, uh, diddlers, all sorts of stuff. Anybody who's got the time and the desire to go sit at a mall and have kids come up and sit on your lap, you're not going to get the cream of the crop. I mean, it's like Boy Scout leaders. You yeah, know? exactly. It's like. You're not getting ex-Marines. I had an ex-Marine who was not so awesome, cheated on me. Semper with my fi. own brother. Semper Fi, brother. Semper not so fi, that relationship. Oh, you know what I mean? Hump day. Hump day. Now we got colorblind glasses versus a comfy Eno. What's a comfy Eno? Is that like a type of bird? Sounds like an Australian animal of some kind. An Eno is those backpack hammocks you can like hang up. They're really popularized at like ADM festivals. Gotcha. Oh, okay. It's like the Bonnaroo hammocks. It looks like a camelback stretched between two trees. It's the Wook couch. Colorblind glasses, pretty awesome. I don't understand how that works. They make you colorblind or they allow colorblind <laughs> people to see? I honestly do not know. I feel like it should be obvious, but then I just thought about it yeah. and I was like, I feel like it's got to be the one that makes colorblind people able to see color. Yeah, and that's awesome if that's the case. But colorblind people can see color. It's just all fucked up. It looks all stupid. They see like dogs or something. Well, everybody sees dogs, but <laughs> it's like they see like yellows and purples a lot or something and they can't tell red from green whatever my dad's colorblind damn i didn't know that i'm so sorry (laughs) didn't need the empathy no no that must have been so so hard on you growing up uh uh-uh not a big deal completely fine he couldn't even see the color of your jersey when he went to your games didn't have to see the color i was sitting on the bench that must have been so hard on you man i am so sorry (laughs) i mean he would run a red light every once in a while it really is not a big deal you were doing like a thing i never knew that about you dude what i hate this is a letter too much if i write him a letter just Please, please use black ink. Yeah, like, I won't use, use blue ink. ink. Yeah. yeah, okay. That's I'm going fine. with colorblind glasses for my love and respect for your father and the hardships he had to go through. Oh, Not only raising you, but with his handicap. If it were Brian Eno, I'd go with him. Oh, but man. for now, I'm going to go with colorblind glasses. Yeah. Now we got The Man by Aloe Black versus Cracking Your Knuckles. Oh, Knuckles. <laughs> knuckles 100%. I, can I go? Go for it, yeah. Get up there. Ooh, that one did the little creaky thing. I hate that. Yeah, you can hear like the gas. When you're not able to, you can't get it fully to crack, yeah. you know? Yeah, I could do a little. Oh. Oh! <laughs> Sing a little song. Please stop talking over my cracking knuckles. Oh, okay. Like, are you serious right now? Yeah. I sat my white ass down and listened when you cracked your knuckles. <laughs> and all of a sudden, when I start cracking them, it's yap, yap, yap. Listen, Don't do that. 
I get it. Your dad was colorblind, but you don't have to take it out on me, bro. The Man by Aloe Black sucks. How does that one go? I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. Right. Just literally like that. Now we've got the ever-following snail versus our friend Quinn. Oh, Quinn! Oh, Quinn. <laughs> Quinn's gotta win. But the ever-following snail is interesting. What is that? It's a snail that never stops following you. <laughs> Is this like something I'm supposed to know? Does everybody know about the ever-following snail and I'm not in on it? Or is this something you guys kind of conjured up? Everyone has an ever-following snail. <laughs> what? Every American, at least. They said it out. He's kind of like the tax man. He's like <laughs> right behind you at any point. Really? Yeah. I saw yours this morning. He was a couple blocks down. He'll be here by the afternoon. I would suggest you leave the office. <laughs> oh, I should be worried? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I do know that they're the fifth most dangerous animal to humans. Exactly. Oh, boy. Who knows what that thing's carrying? I mean, Quinn's kind of like like an ephemeral character, like an eternal spirit. Yeah, kind of like a winter warlock type of character. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of thing. You guys may know him as Tomagothic, by the way. That is yeah. his artist name. His prank videos are amazing, by the way. You guys should check them out. Um, mm -hmm. Just look up Quinn, Hive Mind's friend, prank videos on YouTube. Yeah, a lot of weird riz. Yeah, it's easily Quinn, though. Yeah, fuck that snail. Next, we got Warm Butter versus Bad Luck Brian. Oh, I forgot. I like read that and was like, what the fuck's a Bad Luck Brian? Yeah, I remember now. He looks like my old buddy from high school, Gage. Oh, he does look like Gage. Yeah, it's kind Dude. of funny. Dude. Gage used to say, shut your big head up. I always thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah. Hell of a jump shot too. Bit of a degenerate. We had to talk him into playing basketball one year. Average like 25 points. Said fuck it. Started smoking weed. Didn't play the next year. <laughs> That's typical Gage right there though. Man. Honestly, I miss yeah. that guy. I'll yeah. see you Saturday, Gage. Oh, what the hell? Yeah. Warm butter is really good though and a timeless thing and bad luck Brian has not aged well. Well, we don't know how he's aged. I've only ever seen that picture of him. But <laughs> he's a predator. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Riggy, hi, yikes. Uh, oh, then I'm gonna go with the butter. Yeah. <laughs> now we got, oh, Malice at the Palace versus Laying an Egg. Malice at the Palace, for those not familiar, was uh, Ron Artest, now known as Meta World Peace, mm -hmm. got in a physical altercation with multiple fans inside of the Palace at Auburn Hills. Which was the Pistons' old home stadium. Yes, where they now play at Little Caesars Arena. They used to play at the Palace at Auburn Hills about 45 minutes from Detroit. Yep. And it was a famous, you could look it up. Look up Malice at the Palace. Yeah. In that video. Players foul out, players get into a scuffle, Ron Artest is laying on the scorer's table trying to cool off and fans start throwing beer at him and he runs into the stands and swings on a guy who apparently didn't throw beer. He comes back down. Steven Jackson squares up with someone. Jermaine O'Neal was there. Really kind of left a scar on a lot of those guys' careers, especially Jermaine O'Neal's. That Pacers team was primed to win a championship that year. Yeah. They were really going for it. Easily the best team in the league. All those guys suspended for the rest of the year. They obviously didn't win the championship that year. Pistons were defending a title that year. Had a lot of narratives and storylines going on there. An incredible sports happening. Laying an egg, though. Wow. You know where an egg comes from? Cloaca. The cloaca. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the pleasure portal. Mm -hmm, the pleasure portal. So that means it does feel good coming out. Yeah, the all-purpose pleasure portal. Of most birds. Fowls, yeah. And uh, it was more Spring than a foul them. at the Malice of the Palace. So, yeah, it was um, assault. Yeah, I'm going to go with Malice of the Palace, though. It's just too special. Laying an egg, a lot of people can do it. Yeah. I have a few cousins who've done it. <laughs> I mean, it's just like not that special after a while. Agreed. Now we got When You Just Up versus Stealing Prescription Drugs from Your Grandma. Woo-wee! Gosh, the all lowercase when you just up. Because it means so many things. It could just be like you're up because you can't sleep and you're not doing anything. Like they're, you're twiddling your thumbs basically. Yeah. Or it could be like when you just up. Like you got your money up. Yep. You got your life together. Everything's mm -hmm. going well. And it's kind of like you just up. That's all there is to it. <laughs> like I'm sorry, but I'm up. Yeah, I'm up right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you suck right now. But stealing prescription medication from your grandmother, I mean, that's a free source. That's like the OG lick. You know, before you start robbing people, you reach into your grandmother's medicine cabinet. And then you go, no, Grandma, you only had 10 left, not 25. I'm sorry. I just, some things slip my mind these days. Oh, you've been so nice to me today. What's gotten into you? What do you mean you sold the farm? I told him I'd never sell it. Well, I didn't mean to run him over. Sure is sad that he lost his life, but you can't blame little old me. I can barely see over the steering wheel. Oh, it's all right, Grandma. You're next. Jesus Christ, what the hell's that supposed to mean? It's gonna be the drugs for me. Yeah, for sure. Next we've got George Costanza versus Athlete's Foot. Come on, Costanza walks here. Oh, the yeah. the rizless bald king from New York City. George Costanza is basically the only thing that can take care of Athlete's Foot better than Tenactin. Tough actin' Tenactin. What's his real name? Jason Alexander. Ah, Jason. Give me a term for something that could slightly annoy you. Um, uh, maybe give you the ick. Okay. She gave me the ick, Jerry. <laughs> 
Jerry, she gave me the ick. The ick, the ick. What do you mean the ick? It's hard to explain the ick, Jerry, but you just get it. You get it in your head and then you, you can't be around it anymore. She oh. got the ick. You always get the ick. Now we got gated communities versus tomfoolery. Tomfoolery, what a word, what an awesome word. I love doing it with you. I love doing it with anyone. Yeah. I like getting up to it by myself. Shenanigans, hijinks, tomfoolery. Gaffs, Forcing goofs. around, yeah. gaffing and goofing. Tomfoolery in a gated community, I mean, that Perfect. is the best. Perfect. If you get one person's four digit code and you sneak in there, you start jumping in pools, you start streaking through the streets, knock over a few mailboxes. I mean, that is the best. Turning stop signs upside down? Upside down? Yeah. Well, if you turn a stop sign upside down, I mean, it's an octagon, it would just look the same. The words, though. Oh. Bear traps versus bikini bottom by Ice Spice. Bear traps are so sick. Oh, they are so cool. You know, I've seen you shirtless lately and your bear traps are looking pretty good. Really? You think yeah, so? up here. I mean, you're getting, there's some mass there. It's awesome. You couldn't even put your whole hand around it. I couldn't, yeah. Bikini Bottom by Ice Spice though, very good song. I love that song. Yeah. I mean, that slinky little sample melody is yeah. just something. There's some energy to it that just keeps me going. It's got that SpongeBob thing, you know? And uh, all in all, jokes aside, I'm kind of against animal cruelty and trapping in general. So right. I, I'm kind of leaning Ice Spice here. Pff, you are definitely not against trapping in general. I mean. <laughs> Let's go Bikini Bottom though. All right, now we got flexing through the pain versus dodecahedron. <laughs> Oh boy, this is gonna be this is gonna be tough. You know what? I'm gonna come out and say it. Dodecahedron confuses me. Trapezoid, yeah. very simple. Yeah. That's what I like about <laughs> yeah. it. There's I'm too glad. much stuff going on here. Like this looks like a school project, and I get anxiety even thinking about it. I'm glad you said it because I thought this was gonna be another thing like you got or like Twitter got or something. But yeah, I don't like it. It doesn't make sense to me. Too many sides, and it sounds like a legendary Pokemon. Low key sounds like what I hit on in Roulette. Oh, the Decagon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Decagon. Was it's awesome, kind of a Decagon yeah. vibe. Um, but flexing through the pain is just like part of everyone's life. Yeah, word to field medic, you know. I'm going flexing through the pain. Facts. You have to. Now we got palindromes versus putting turtles on their backs. Ooh, more animal cruelty. Palindromes is the thing where it's the same forward and backwards. Oh, nice. Like fire truck. <laughs> hey, I get it. Meow mix. <laughs> Dude. Woodrow Wilson. Those are all palindromes. And I like those because it's it's fun, it's clever. Putting turtles on their back is mean. I don't like that shit. <laughs> Snappers though, those fuckers can roll right back over. Tell you what, they are not getting slowed down by being put on their back. They are man eaters. That's kind of like how I like to live my life. You know, you can put me on my back, but I'm gonna get right back up and I'm gonna bite your finger off. I like being put on my back. Getting rode, ridden. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're all just waiting for you to come out of your shell, you know? Being ridden. I don't know, putting a turtle on its back, spinning it around, if it's flipping it back over. <laughs> like, you don't, just do it for a second. Like, it's like a funny little trick or whatever. It's like, I'm so confused, ouch. And then you flip it back over and you go, I love you, buddy, Henry. I'm more of a palindrome fan here. Well, it's palindrome. Whatever. Same forward or backwards, so. Palindromes are overrated, who gives a shit? I'm gonna go with putting turtles on their backs and make Grant pick. That's what I'm gonna do too. Turtles on their back. Yes. Nice. Last one in the first round, we've got spending Friday night alone, just you and your six pack of Coors Light versus clean silverware. First one. The drinking alone thing? Yeah, that's like uh, my self care night. Drinking alone is self care to you? <laughs> Mentally, yeah. That is not good, man. I'm either drinking alone or drinking with people I can't fucking stand. You know what I mean? We drink together all, oh shit. I'm gonna go with clean silverware, because I think about this often. When I go to my parents' house, they have so much clean silverware. And then when I live alone, I keep it clean, but I only have like four of everything. Yeah. So <laughs> if I eat like two meals and then I got whatever, you know, there's a good chance that I gotta clean it off before. That's true. Not much these days, I live alone, so it's not a big deal. But mm -hmm. I just love looking at my parents' silverware drawer. It's like, wow, you have like 150 spoons, you know? <laughs> you are ready for a whole youth football team to show up. Straight up. I'm going to drinking alone though. Grant? Clean silverware. Wear, baby. Yeah. You can see yourself in that shit. Second round. Ding dong. No more pictures, by the way. We're just going off memory now. Mr. Crocker from Fairly Odd Parents versus Dance Dance Revolution. I mean, one's a revolution. <laughs> and one's like a weird, kind of suspect teacher guy. Seems like he's kind of a narc. He got the win first round just on obscurity alone. The ears on the neck really played in his favor. But you're going up against a revolution, pal. They said the revolution would not be televised. I'll tell you what. That was on my TV a lot growing up. Dance mm -hmm. Dance Revolution. But what else was on my TV? 
TV a lot. Mr. Crocker from Fairly Odd Parents, who I am going to pick because of his emphatic energy. I mean, just unpredictable. I'm going Mr. Crocker as well. Man. Very God Parents. I mean, he's just cool, you know? He's a skinny freak. He's, he's got yeah. narc energy. I mean, yeah, but you can appreciate a narc from afar. No. I can. Depends on where the crosswind's at, and if I have a clean shot, then I can maybe appreciate him. All right, packing peanuts versus a good potluck. A good potluck. Yeah, it's not even, let's not even talk about that. No. I mean, there's no reason to talk about it. All right, now we got Bucky Dent versus Church Pews. I think Church Pews had like a nice surprising first round win, but Bucky Dent is Bucky fucking Dent. This one's way closer for me than it is for you. Being oh, a man of man faith. Bucky Dent, such a good name, such an obscure reference. I mean, it's just kind of our bread and butter. Church Pews, however, there's something about just like when you say Church Pews, you really feel something. And not that there's a God, like there isn't. I'm not saying that there's any sort of extracurriculars going on. I'm talking strictly physical memory of the space. Yeah. I'm gonna go church pews. I'm taking church pews. Jesus yeah. Christ. You guys. All right, now we got going back to the old stomping grounds versus cool landlords. <laughs> There's nothing really like going back home. Cool landlords, like you can only be so cool. I think the coolest landlords probably like Hannibal Burris or the lead singer of Waves. Yeah. But even them. You still gotta pay rent every month. Used to work at a coffee mill and I went back to my old stomping grounds. Yeah. Now we got uh, finding a sand dollar versus the woke agenda. Can the woke agenda lose, please? Yeah, absolutely. Finding a sand dollar is gas. Yeah, it is just magical. It's like the free activity you do on vacation that you still kind of remember. And sometimes you take a little bucket home with you and it sits on your porch for like six years. Life hack for you guys, by the way, though. Sand dollars do not work in vending machines. Don't try. And trust me, I have tried every vending machine. Coca-Cola, the Big K, the variety ones at the truck stops. Mm -hmm. I mean, everywhere. I go, I thought it'd work at the airport ones that sell like makeup and phone chargers. Totally, yeah. Because that made sense to me for uh, whatever reason. But the beauty boutique bar, yeah. <laughs> Tying a bunch of balloons to Hasbulla and watching him float away versus Corn Maze. Gonna be tough to beat Corn Maze. We're from Ohio. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Corn Maze. I feel like it's too specific of an image. Yeah. I really liked it at first because it painted a picture. Sure. But now a Corn Maze just feels too rootsy and close to my core. Yeah, and yeah, the Hasbulla thing's fun one time, but I don't want to think about it anymore. Neither do I. Now we got ghouls and Goblins versus Shadow Puppets. This is kind of a big, big time bout right here. Yeah, it's a fitting matchup, you know? Yeah. Shadow Puppets is you playing pretend. Yes. Ghouls and Goblins are unique and bountiful. Horrific, yet beautiful. Sinister, yet sweet. Yeah. If you train them well enough. And also kind of up for interpretation. What's that? If you can harness their energy, they're quite powerful. I still have six vials of goblin serum yeah, I know you in my do. crawl space. And I intend on going back for it in the time that I need it most. It's just squirrel piss and vodka, bro. I really don't think it's gonna work again, but you know, whatever. I don't wanna test it. I want ghouls and goblins to win. Yeah, me too. Now we got trauma dumping versus Coney 2012. Easily Coney 2012. Trauma dumping is kind of annoying. I'm sick that he even got out of the first round. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a good point. Coney 2012 is like our War of the Worlds. It's a big bamboozle. It's tough to do in the modern age too. Second side, we've got fun socks versus the drunken clam. We're not even gonna talk about this one either. Lois, I survived 9-11 by sleeping through my flight. Anyways, I'm going down to the clam with Trenton. Yeah, Trenton. Now we got Zamboni versus Hump Day Camel. Man, you hate to see either of these lose. Hump Day? Hump Day? <laughs> but it's Zamboni, man. It's like the only break in sports that gets like a true cheer. Like when the guy comes out to wipe the sweat off the basketball court, or if like, you know, a ref has to like fix a pylon on the field or something, no one cares. Yeah, but sometimes like, people even shoot blow darts at the ball boys. Right. I mean, they deserve it. They're so fucking clumsy and yeah, annoying. They are idiots. They're too excited to be out there. It feels like they should have picked some people that like aren't starstruck by the players. Here's you know? your ball, Mr. James. It's like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Get tranquilized, be professional. bitch. Yeah. I'm on the fence. I'm going to go Zamboni. I'm going to mm -hmm. go Zamboni, but I mean, I will say just like hearing. It's great. Now we got colorblind glasses versus cracking your knuckles. I I'm done with caring about your dad. What? I want to crack my knuckles. I don't care about your colorblind father anymore. I cracked my brass knuckles on a homeless guy's head last week. <laughs> Hell yeah. His head was hard as shit. Hell yeah. Now we got our friend Quinn versus Warm Butter, mm -hmm. which is coincidentally the name of his first YouTube video. What I would do to cover that boy in Warm Butter again. I don't say stuff like that. I mean, I mean he looks gosh. so beautiful, glistening and greasy. That's and true. Savory. Yeah. It's not every day that you meet someone that again is ephemeral and eternal and has the spirit of creativity 
creepy and mystical and wonderful all at the same time that will allow you to cover them in butter. I know a few guys. Really? Yeah. My uncle Jim is the one of them. Jim lets you do that? Yeah. Well, no, no. He would let you do it. He wouldn't oh, let me do awesome. it. Awesome. You, yeah, yeah. you can't do it in the family. Sure. It's insane. I can't believe you even think well, it's not that. a sexual thing. I know. It doesn't matter. It's an artistic. Yeah. Next person is Mike Piazza. Really? Yeah. Former New York Mets catcher. Of course. Mike Piazza, yeah. <laughs> Hall of Famer type energy there. Oh, yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. Wow. He'll let you do it. And the last person is Aubrey Plaza, second cousin Shelby. That's cool. I really like doing it on Quinn, though. Where are you going here? I mean, I'm picking Quinn. You're asking me to choose between a friend and butter? It's a lot harder for me than I'd like to admit, but I will go with Quinn as well. Wow, I don't like, <laughs> do not like to see that side of you, but. Next, we got Malice the Palace versus stealing prescription drugs from your grandma. One's just like a singular event, and the other is like repeatable over as long as she lives. Yeah, one is one basketball game, yeah. and one is a weekly series. So I'm gonna go with that one. Me too. Best of seven always goes to game seven. <laughs> <laughs> Next. I got George Costanza versus tomfoolery. You know, a man who would not be afraid to partake in some tomfoolery, kind of incidentally. Right. He finds himself caught up in tomfoolery, not usually the instigator of it. He makes a lot of bad decisions when it comes to crunch time that yeah. lead him to more tomfoolery, right. but he doesn't pull the car off the lot. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going with George, though. I'm going to go with George as well. I think there's more there. Next, we got Bikini Bottom by Ice Spice versus Flexing Through the Pain. I'm going with Ice Spice again. Flexing Through the the pain kind of, you know, gets gets a little old. Sometimes it's good to feel the pain and cry along with it in order to actually grow and move forward. I just think flexing through the pain can kind of sound lame sometimes. I don't think either of these are going to age super well because I don't think Bikini Bottom by Ice Spice is going to necessarily be like the one that everybody's no. talking about in a long time. But you know, whatever. Who gives a shit? I'm going to go with the song that's on my playlist right now. Bikini yeah. Bottom. Next we got putting turtles on their backs versus clean silverware. I've kind of gone all the way around here on this one. I'm, I'm with turtles now. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be the turtle because again, the spin. The spin. The <laughs> Imagine playing shuffleboard with baby sea turtles. Imagine playing Beyblades with turtles. Fuck yeah. You get one of those arenas, you spin them down in there, they're cracking into each other, yeah. squealing for help. I know, I spoke, I was like, oh, I don't like animal cruelty, but honestly, I thought about it, turtle soup is gas, like, right, right, turtles right, right. are kind of stupid, mm -hmm. who knows what's inside those shells, let's get in there, let's check it out. I guess it'd be a turtle, man. I'm going with that. Clean silverware is whatever, but it implies doing chores. Third round, Mr. Crocker, Fairly Odd Parents, versus a good potluck. Oh, this is like a crock pot. It's going to be a <laughs> slow cook, too. I've got to think about this okay. one. You take your time, buddy, but I, I am firmly in the potluck's corner. And I'm firmly in the corner at the potluck watching Fairly Odd Parents on my phone. Why would you? What the fuck? That's what I do. Terrible dinner guest. Yeah, I'm going to go potluck. <sighs> Church pews versus going back to the old stomping grounds. <laughs> For you, they're really one and the same. Yeah, church pews are my old stomping grounds. I'm going with stomping grounds. I hate religion in most of all forms, especially the physical physical representation of a place of worship. Church pews. I'm going stomping grounds. Yes. <sighs> All right, now we got finding a sand dollar versus corn maze. Ooh, I'm going to betray some of my Midwestern roots here. I'm going to go sand dollar. I'm going corn maze. Why? Life is a corn maze and I'm going to eat it till I'm out. Sure. Ooh, corn maze also reminds me of Field of Dreams. Yeah. Kevin Costner. If you build it, they will come. Shout out Iowa. Yeah, I'm gonna go with corn maze. I'm going sand dollar. I feel like finding a sand dollar is more magical, so mm. I'm gonna go there. I knew you would. You're a vacation boy, and you've you betrayed your Midwest roots, just like Graydon here. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Fuck them. All right, ghouls and goblins versus Coney 2012. I think ghouls and goblins takes the cake here. I think so too. <laughs> a little more vague. Again, we have this one instance in history. Sure, we were hoodwinked, we were bamboozled, the wool was pulled over our eyes yet again. But ghouls and goblins extends to to the beginning of time. Yeah, so many stories have ghouls and goblins. I mean, any Halloween story, stuff with wizards, the House of Representatives right now. Oh, yeah. You know Good what one. I mean? And like cautionary tales, you right. know, don't stay out past 11 or the old sewer goblin will milk you dry. Yeah, I've heard that one. Never scared me though, I wanted to be milked. Don't go into a stadium bathroom for the goblin will eat your eyes. That one seems a little bit like you were being controlled or manipulated. Cause I mean, stadium bathroom's fine. Just give me five more dollars or those ghouls will come and rip your toenails off. That's oh, like an yeah. old tale my yeah. aunt used to tell me. Yeah, you were you were getting scammed by your aunt. I hate to tell you that. That actually doesn't surprise me. She was crazy addicted to gambling. She, oh, really? Yeah, she took cruises around the world one year just to kind of recoup the losses of the last one. Didn't work out. Came back. Got a divorce. Lost her house. Doesn't talk to her kids anymore. Went on the Maury show. Found out she was the daughter of 
of a really, really bad person. I won't name him, but it was Lee Harvey Oswald. No <laughs> way. She comes out of her mind, continues to gamble with money that she doesn't have, gets swept up in this whole mob scandal. Debt from here and debt from here kind of starts a mob conflict between two debt lords. Sure. And then she got a boot on her car. It's terrible what happened to her life. Hate to just kind of like make this all about one detail in there, but does sure. that mean that you're related to Lee Harvey Oswald? Oh yeah. Really? That's why I'm such a good shot. Dude, that is fucking awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. I was hoping you would yeah. like judge oh, me my for God. it. Are you serious? Yeah. Can I meet him? Drunken Clam versus Zamboni. Fuck. This is like a final four matchup Fuck. right here. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. I gotta go reality. I'm sorry. I'm going with the clam. The idea of the clam is more real to me than a real <laughs> Zamboni. Every bar I went into in Boston, I was like, ah, oh, the clam. I'm going Zamboni though, Grant. Where do you lie? I'm taking Zamboni. Ah, are we just gonna end up with another like funny word winning it? Like it's, it's just, not just a funny word. Like trapezoid Zamboni. Like I get it, but I'm just saying like that drunken clam. Like all right, we got cracking your knuckles versus our friend Quinn. I'll go with our friend Quinn. I'm gonna go with cracking your knuckles here. It's okay. just something visceral about it, and mm -hmm. I love Quinn. Don't want him to be wiped off the face of the earth, but in this case, I really don't want those like stiff hands. Oh yeah. The release means a lot to me, you know. I'm sorry, Quinn. I love you, buddy. But, uh, I mean, cracking, you can understand, right? Grant, it's up to you. Uh, I'm gonna take cracking your knuckles. Mm. Yeah. Now we got stealing prescription drugs from your grandma versus George Costanza. Let's keep it wholesome. George Costanza should win this battle. I'm an adult. I can get my own drugs. Ah, my grandma doesn't need them, though, and she forgets. And then it's like she's got the really good ones because, like, of course, she's in so much pain. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's fun to take meds with your grandma. Not for me. Really? Yeah. Too much talking. I'm going Georgie though. You know what? Yeah, I'll go GC. I'll go George on him. I mean, what a character, you know what I mean? He's awesome. I mean, the show's nothing without him. Last one in this round, we got Bikini Bottom by Ice Spice versus putting turtles on their backs. Show me that turtle upside down. Yeah, it's really <laughs> caught a stride here. Yeah, it has. I mean, it has. It's kind of picked up steam. <laughs> right. Um, it's unnatural. That creature is not intended to be upside down. <laughs> no. So much so that it gets stuck. Yeah, it's almost like a stop sign in that way. We're into our Elite Eight. Good potluck versus going back to the old stomping grounds. These can often go hand in hand. Yeah. I'm leaning potluck still. I'm leaning stomping grounds here. Okay, why? Potluck, too many new people possibly. That's you true. You might run into some neighbors and they might be unpleasant. Yes, that is absolutely true. I didn't Old stomping that. grounds, if they are unpleasant, it's usually a familiar unpleasant. It's the devil you know. Right. Yeah. It's the devil you know. No need to be slow. Something about group love, man. They are fire. Really yeah, had like a I mean, resurgence in our zeitgeist. I think least. so, yeah. <laughs> I'm going stomping grounds. You've convinced me. It makes sense. I am scared of new people and I'm scared of strangers cooking at the end of the day. Let's get group love trending, guys. So can we do that? Yeah, I think we can. Do you think we, we have the power to do that? Internet, do your thing. Let's get group love trending. Finding a sand dollar versus ghouls and goblins. It's G and G's for me. Yeah, it's gotta be ghouls and goblins here. It's like a childlike wonderment, one thing, or like, you know, something that tortures kind of your imagination your whole life. A childlike terror. I like that more. But it exists into adulthood still. Yeah, absolutely. You know, ghouls and goblins still very real. You find yourself on a cobblestone street in the dark. What's racing through your mind? How many pills my grandma has left? Oh, no. It's like, <laughs> what's in the sewer? What made that noise? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, no, totally. So yeah. imagine you haven't had the pills for four days. What are you imagining? Strangling a doctor. Oh, <laughs> All right, now we got Zamboni versus cracking your knuckles. I'll take cracking your knuckles. Every time you flip, I'm on the other side. It's it's really interesting. I'm gonna go Zamboni here. Weird. I've never done it. I think that's what it comes down to. You've never cracked your knuckles? But you did earlier. Yeah, I guess you're right. What the fuck? I don't know. I don't really have. A <laughs> you forget the first half of the video. What happened to you? I don't really have like a strong reasoning for. I can tell for choices. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I'm just kind of going with the... I, it's like you don't even believe what you're saying right now. I guess I don't care. Oh my God, okay. I think that's the problem. It's not, it's not, I guess it's not a problem. I mean, it is a problem right now for the video. You can see it as a good thing, I no, guess. It's no like, real way to look at it that way. Do, do it matter? Jesus Christ, wake the fuck up. I mean, sure, Zamboni. There are thousands of people watching right now. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Hello. <laughs> what are you guys doing here? Which one do you want to win? Okay. 
I'm voting Zamboni. I'll crack the knuckles. I'll crack my knuckles. Oh my gosh. See my K's. George Costanza versus putting turtles on their backs. I think this one's easy. I feel like you could put George Costanza on his back and he wouldn't be able to get up. That's just mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm going with the turtles. That is way funnier to me. I am just imagining a turtle spinning and it's been spinning the whole time throughout the game, you know? <laughs> yeah, I can kind of see it. It spins a little faster and then you kind of like, it slows down for a second and you get it back going. Yeah. I'm going with Costanza. Turtles. Turtles. That's fine. I do like it. I've really warmed up to the visual. Final four is set. Going back to the old stomping grounds, ghouls and goblins, <laughs> cracking your knuckles and putting turtles on their backs. <laughs> see, there's no funny word. There is no funny word and I'm happy about that because I'm not. we're mixing it up. First matchup, going back to the old stomping grounds versus ghouls and goblins. Show me the ghouls and goblins. Yeah, it's got to be ghouls and goblins. It's too wholesome, the other one. It always sounds so good in theory. Oh, I'm heading back to the old stomping. Then sometimes you find yourself at like a shitty dive bar, like some <laughs> high school friends saying like some borderline things. Right. And you have to be like, oh, it's so good to see you guys. Borderline stuff is always tough. The immigration conversation is just not an easy one to have, especially with old friends you're not keeping up with. Yeah. Know? Some things catch you by surprise and you're like, oh shit, I didn't know you, uh, you thought all that happened. Maybe the real ghouls and goblins are at the old stomping grounds all along. Well, fucking said Riley. To the other side, we've got cracking your knuckles versus putting turtles on their backs. We gotta go TTs on their bees. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where the second T came from. <laughs> there. No, you said TTs on their bees. <laughs> Turtle theirs on their backs. Nope. It seemed to me like you were doing a turtles. <laughs> yeah, that too. So tulls. Yeah, I was doing that. Turtles on their backs. TTs on their bees, bitch. What's up now? He's next. <sighs> okay, so we have our final matchup set. Now I'm gonna be putting a poll in the chat. You guys can vote, but please let us know what you think should have made it farther, what should have been in the finals. And if you have ideas for the random things bracket, please comment them, send them to DJ Grant, and join our Discord where he asks for those things. Also shout out to Sam Aarons, Zach, and Levi for helping make the random things bracket. They truly are random and they were born random. <laughs> All right, get your votes in. Ghouls and goblins versus putting turtles on their backs. Ghouls and Goblins really dominated its side of the bracket. Ran right through. Turtles on their backs had to gain some steam for me. I think I did vote against it in the first round. Yeah, it was a rough start for Turtles on their backs, but really made a run. So I will ask you first, Graydon, who shall you choose? Ghouls and Goblins. Well, that's good because I am picking putting Turtles on their backs. So DJ Grant, you are deciding our random things bracket. Oh baby, um, give me Turtles, man. That's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. This is sportsmanship by me right here. Yeah. Crazy, okay. <laughs> Dude, when, you You're being a great sportsman. You don't right call now. out your own sportsmanship. I Not mean. being a sore loser. I'm just a recognizing the win and congratulating it. Even though I voted for something else, I don't mind. I'm happy you guys are happy, and that's a good sportsman on me. Putting turtles on their backs wins our random things bracket episode <laughs> two. This is really an endless pool. We there's, can always do this. There's so many things. Also, comment other brackets you want us to do. Thank you for playing along with us, having so much fun with us. <laughs> Make sure you like the video, subscribe, all the stuff I did not say at the beginning of the video, and Graydon, please leave these wonderful people with some advice to leave or live their lives by. That which is not good for the beehive is not good for the bee. All right, this has been Hive Mind Unlimited. We love you, appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. Who the? Oh, <laughs>
Yeah. Like 2022? <laughs> yeah. Really? I said, tomorrow, man, I know it's my birthday, and I know you've been doing the whistling, humming, singing thing for a while. Mm -hmm. It would mean a lot to me if you just didn't it because it makes me uncomfortable. It sends a cold chill up my spine. Oh, see, I thought you were talking like 20, 25, maybe. Why, something why like would that I be then. talking about that? I don't know. You know, it takes me a minute to cool off from traditions. It's like maybe next year I do it worse. Like I was so perfect this time. No, know? just don't. Okay. Don't ever okay. do that again near me. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Marathon contestant with a silly stride. That's random.